Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching me. I uh, just want to say I uh, hope you're having a blessed and wonderful day in the Lord. I uh, wanted to take a few minutes this morning to share some things that God dropped in my spirit to uh, encourage you in your faith and to, to point you uh, continually in the right direction so that you can have victory in your life. Amen. You know, God's desire is for us to always have victory, not that once in a while, uh, not occasionally, but you know, the Bible says that God wants us to be victorious every day. And this is the victory, 1 John 5, 4 and 5, that overcomes the world, even our faith. Learning to operate in faith uh, is very, very important if we're going to walk in victory. And God does want us to walk in victory all the time, not, one, not, not once in a while, all the time. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians uh, fifteen fifty seven that thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in, in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14, it says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and uh, through us effuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So if we're not living in victory, it's not God's fault. It's just that either we uh, lack knowledge of what we're supposed to do in order to walk in victory, or in some cases people know, but uh, they don't do it. You know, the Bible says in James, the first chapter, verse 19 through 27, that it's the doer of the word, it's blessed, not the hearer. So we can listen to the word, we can shout, we can say amen, we can do all these things, uh, given the offering, but if we don't leave and do what the word of God says, uh, and, what, and not only what the word of God says, but also what the Holy Spirit says, this is something that needs to be emphasized. We need to obey God's written word, but at the same time, we need to obey the promptings of the Spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8, 14, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So let me share quickly with you what God says in His Word that you need to do in order to have victory. Now this is a very familiar scripture. I'm sure that you've probably heard it preached or read it yourself. And it's found in Joshua 1, 8. He says, this book of the law, now that's all Joshua had was the law. We have the complete Word of God, the Old and the New Testament. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do all that is written therein, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. I think that's very, very uh, clear and very simple. He says, hey, you got to speak the Word of God continually. Get your mouth in line with the Word of God. Secondly, you got to med meditate the Word of God uh, consistently. You know, you, you, you have to live in the Word. You, you know, you can't just occasionally pick up the Bible, occasionally go to church and expect to be a victorious Christian. You're not. You will be defeated. You will be defeated. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll go one step further. If you're not willing to, to abide in the Word and stay in the Word, you may not la you you may not finish the race. Amen. You know there are people right now that are that have been Christians and that are uh, even ministers. They're, they're they've fallen from the race. They've fallen from grace. Uh, why? Well, because you got to live in this Word. This you got to feed your spirit the Word of God continually, and you have to meditate the Word by speaking it, by thinking about it, by reading it, by uh, you know, pondering it, uh, it, it every single day. You have, you know, Jesus said it this way. Man does not live by bread alone. That's Matthew 4. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, you know, most of us do a pretty good job taking care of feeding our bodies. But when it comes to our spirits, so many Christians are deficient spiritually because they do not feed themselves constantly on the word of God. And yet it's so simple. He says here, if you want to have success, you have to meditate this Word of God day and night, constantly, and then do what it says. And he says, then you'll make your way prosperous. Then you have good success. I think that's pretty simple. I'm, I'm willing to do it because I want to, I, I want to walk in, in, the, in the blessing and what Jesus may, uh, paid such a, a dear price for us to redeem us. I want to walk in it. And when you walk in God's blessings and when you're successful, particularly in the day that we're living in now where there's so much you know, pressure economically and so many different ways that people are getting stressed out. And, and when you're living in victory and when you're walking in joy, when you're living in health because you, you're doing what the Word of God says, uh, that's a testimony unto the Lord. Men and women will be drawn to you and it will open up the door for you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, with them. Now look at Psalms, uh, the first chapter. Psalms, the first chapter. Here's what it says. Psalm 1, verse 1 through 3. Blessed is the man, that includes ladies too, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight 
is in the law of the Lord. So you, you have to delight in the word. You have to love the word. And if you don't love the word, then, then you can't say that you love Jesus because Jesus is the word, going to John 1. Uh, so many people, you know, they, they, they say they love Jesus, but yet they, they don't love his word. Well, here he says, you have to delight in, in the word. You, your delight is in the word. And in, and in his word, and I says here the law, because that's all they had back then, but in, we can say it this way, in his word, he meditates on it one day and night. Now, that doesn't mean that you, you know, don't go to work and just stay home and read your Bible and listen to the tapes. No. Uh, you, you meditate the Word of God. And today with the, the technology that we have, it's easy to meditate the Word. Look, I mean, right now, I'm ministering to you via Facebook. It's free. Uh, it's recorded. You can watch it over and over and over. Feed your spirit. That's just one way. I mean, we have a website, www.etm.org. That's www.etm.org. You can go there and uh, go scroll to the bottom of the uh, main page and go to our YouTube channel. We have over 40 videos that are loaded on there, both in English and Spanish, that you can feed your faith on. You can share them with your friends. You can share them on social me media. Uh, you know, we have books that we've published. You'll find them on our website. They're used in Bible schools, uh, both in English and Spanish. We've had them published in Pakistan. Uh, if you're watching me from Pakistan, you can contact Dr. William Johnson, uh, in Lahore, uh, and he uh, he has uh, published our books over there in the Urdu language, and and these are all tools through which we can meditate the Word of God continually. And it says that if you delight in the Lord and you meditate His Word day and night, you should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in a season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever He does shall prosper. So here here it is again, and a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. Uh, never has uh, is not concerned about whether it rains, doesn't rain, whether it's cloudy or sunny. Why? Because he, he has a source of nutrition. And so what, when you make the Word of God the, the, the source, the only source through which you build your faith on, which you cling on, you delight in it, and then you do what he says, God will always provide for you. It doesn't make a difference what's going on in the economy, uh, whether it's the economy in the U.S., the economy in Mexico, the economy in Africa, the economy anywhere else. You know, God is not moved by the economies of this world, and, and His Word works. He has a track record. We see God prosper His children, even in the midst of famine, even in the midst of captivity, Babylonian captivity. The children of God that walked with God, that were faithful to Him, prospered. Uh, Genesis 26, Isaac prospered during famine. Why? He obeyed God. He sowed in famine. And so that's the key. Now, let me close with this. Go to John 15. John 15. And let's read uh, verse 5 through 7. He said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Now, Jesus again, in John 1, 1, uh, in John the first chapter, he is the Word, amen? The Word became flesh. So without Jesus or without the Word, we can do nothing. Amen. There is no victory without the Word. No victory at all. It says, and if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and with it, and they gather them and throw them in the fire and they are burned up. So, you know, one of the ways that we abide in him is we have to stay in the word. And I want you to notice that a person that does not stay in the word uh, uh, will, will be cast out uh, as a branch and, and will wither. And uh, he'll be thrown into the fire. Now, I know that there are people who believe this once saved, always saved business, but that's that's a... That's not a biblical doctrine, and, and, and that's proven out in Hebrews 6, Hebrews 10, and uh, Revelation 22, and in many other places, that a person can lose their salvation. Now, that's not an easy thing to do, uh, but, but, you, but you can do it. And one way is not to abide in Him. He says right here, he says, if you don't abide in Him, uh, how, one way that you abide in Him by staying in the Word. It says, you know, you, you're, going, you, you're not going to be able to produce fruit, you're going to dry up, and you're going to be cut off, and you're going to be cast into the fire. I mean, that's pretty simple. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Notice that. If you abide in me, if you live in me, one way is you stay in the word. 
and my words abide in you. The word is living inside of you. Now, the only way that the word of God can live inside of you is if you meditate on it continually so it gets inside of you. The reason that some people's faith doesn't work is because they mentally ascended to the truth. They believe with their head that what's written as the word of God is true, but they didn't meditate long enough to get inside of their heart. No, that word has to get in your heart and it's through constant feeding on it, constant feeding on it, constant thinking about it, constant speaking about it. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask for true desire and it will be done for you. Now, I just felt the Lord wanted me to read one more scripture to you, and that's found in Matthew, the seventh chapter. Because again, you know, uh, people are, are teaching today, they once saved, always saved, it doesn't make any difference what you do, God loves you, you know, everybody's going to heaven, and uh, uh, that's not the way it works. You, you have to run the race, you have to win the price, and you have to hold on to your sal salvation. And you do that by abiding in Him. And if you do that, you'll, you'll walk victoriously. There's no, there's, there's no devil, no, no, nothing will take you away from Jesus. But you have a part, a part to play. And, and so, Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 21. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. Now, the will of God, as, we, as we're going to find out, is the word of God. It says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. Now, in order to cast out devils, you have to be born again and have faith in the name of Jesus. We see the sons of Sceva over there in Acts 19, I believe, tried to cast out a demon in the name of Jesus when Paul preached. And that one demon-possessed man jumped on seven of them, beat them up, and stripped, stripped them naked, and they ran out of there because they had no faith in the name of Jesus. But these people had faith in the name of Jesus. They cast out devils. They prophesied in, 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 uh, in, in, in the Lord's in, in name. That means they operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, in order to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, you have to be Spirit-filled. You have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And notice they did many wonders in their name. They did miracles in their name. The gifts of the Spirit operated through them. So these people were mature Christians, all right? And he says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, you enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. It's not enough just saying, Jesus is my Lord. You have to do the will of the Father, which is the Word of God. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Now notice many, many. Uh, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. Then I will declare to them, I never knew you, you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now the Amplified Bible says this, then I will say to them openly, publicly, I never knew you depart from me, you who, uh, you, wow, hard to read my own handwriting, that's bad. Uh, you who do not, uh, oh, let's see. You who act wickedly, oh, here it is. You who act wickedly disregarding my commandments. And read that again out of the Amplified Bible. I will say to them openly, publicly, I never knew you depart from me. You who act wickedly disregarding my commandments. So God considers people acting wickedly when they disregard what he says. He expects for us to obey what he says. He expects for us to reverence what he says. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I would liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rock is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is the word of God. The house represents a man's life. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fail, for it was founded upon the rock. In other words, when you build your life on the word of God, the, the storms of life will come against you, but you will not fall. Now, like I said, I've been in the ministry now 36 years, and I've seen even ministers seasoned ministers today fall away from the things of God. Why? They, they stop building their house on the rock. They stop meditating the word. They stop doing what the word of God says. And eventually the devil got in there and deceived them and misled them. I'm thinking of one minister, very prominent, traveled all over the United States, preaching uh, on national television. And, and today he's following Buddha uh, and, and following some dead yogi. Uh, and uh, so... It says, uh, verse 26, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does that do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was his fall. What would be a great fall? A person not making it into heaven? A person that's been born again, ran the race, but ran out of steam because he refused to meditate the Word of God daily. He refused to do what the Word of God says. He got lazy. He got carnal. All right? So, and listen, if you've, been, if you've been carnal, if you've been lazy about the Word of God, ask God to forgive you. He's a merciful God. Just be honest with God. Say, Lord, you know what? I, I've, I've not been meditating the Word of God the way I, I should. I, I'm, I haven't been going to church the way I should. 
Uh, or maybe you're going to a dead church that doesn't preach the word of God. There's no move of the spirit of God. Find another church. Find a church where they preach the uncompromised word of God with integrity and with power and get planted and rooted in there. Amen. And then start doing what the word of God says and watch God move in your life. I, I trust that I've been helpful to you, that uh, where things that I've shared have uh, ministered to you and will encourage you to continue to move forward in God. Have a blessed rest of the day, evening, or afternoon, depending on where you're watching me. Amen.